Hey everybody, it's Father Bill and this is the Friday Reflection for, well, it's the Friday of the last Friday of the year of December of 2022. And that means it's pretty exciting, right? But I'm actually recording this on on Wednesday, the day before, the, which would be the, or a couple days before, which is the 28th. Uh, I want you to notice a few things. I am wearing a yellow watch with yellow hands and my green and gold duck shirt. Does that mean I've gone crazy? No. That just means that today the Ducks, University of Oregon Ducks, are playing South Carolina in the Holiday Bowl. And that's in San Diego. But I'm not alone because take a look. I think somebody else here is... He's kind of... Uh, yeah, he's all over this too. Okay. So... <clears throat> We're rooting for the ducks. That's right. No, hell is not frozen over. Hell is not frozen over. It's just that I I like the beavers, of course. They're my team. I'm a two-timer at the university there. But I let's say I'm a it comes down to being someone that has kind of a hierarchy of teams. So the first of course is my beavers. And then locally will be the ducks. And then it'll be the Pac-12. And then it'll be like Notre Dame. And then I don't know. <clears throat> After that, it's not much of my care. So but that's just football, right? That's just the bowl game stuff, right? Uh, is that important? Well, in a year it won't be. Well, maybe another exact year it might be, but it won't be the same teams and the outcome of this game, which from what I hear, uh, the Ducks, and by the time you see this, the outcome will be known. But as I was reading, the Ducks have a two touchdown um, advantage. We'll see. I hope it's a good game. I hope it's competitive. I hope it's exciting. But again, it's just a game. But uh, what will matter? Well, here's the thing. On January 1st, which is this coming Sunday, and then we'll just say, of course, the eve as well, we're celebrating a very important solemnity. And it's something about Jesus. I bet you thought I was going to say something about Mary. Well, it is Mary, Mother of God. That's the title. But where does it come from? And is this actually about Mary or is it about Jesus? Well, I've already given you the answer. The answer is really about Jesus. Why is that even though we say Mary, mother of God? Well, simply because Mary gave birth to God, the incarnate son, Jesus. So there's a council called the Council of Ephesus. It was in 431, I believe. And in that council, they had to deal with uh, Nestorianism, which proposed, and there's a whole bunch of other struggles in the early church to figure out, to try to understand who is Jesus and how is he human and how is he divine? How is that possible? What's going on there? So there was a guy named Nestorius. I believe he was an Orthodox priest or bishop who proposed that Jesus had, were basically human and divine, but two persons, not one person, but he was two persons. And that's how he explained something. And, you know, I give him bone, you know, on this. He's trying to figure this out. But the church universal did not agree with that. And, and because it became a controversy, became popular and, and a controversy, it was needed to really define this. So that was something that the Council of Ephesus dealt with was Nestorianism. And it came down saying that Jesus is one person with two natures, human and divine. One person, two natures, human and divine. That means he's one Jesus Christ. He is both God and man. 100% God, 100% man. And yes, that's bad math, but I guess think about it as a super saturated solution if you're looking at like chemistry. It's only an analogy. Of course, it fails miserably probably, but nonetheless, in the person of Jesus, was God, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, as well as the human being, the man from Nazareth, who was born of the Virgin Mary. And here's the deal. So if that's the case, that means we can call Jesus God. And this is very important. And when we speak about Jesus as being God, we're saying, we're speaking as a, in terms of a, what they call a, a high Christology. A Christology is the study of Jesus, but a high Christology is coming and thinking about him from his divinity from divinity down. And then the low Christology approach would be thinking about him from the bottom up as human and then looking towards divinity. 
this was putting these two together. That is, God and man together in one person. And so, when this council made this very clear, they also made clear an ancient title from Mary, Theotokos, God-bearer. It's a Greek word. Theotokos. You can see right here. I put it up on the screen here. Theotokos. And that means Mary didn't just have Jesus, the human person. He had one person. She had one person, that is Jesus, who is human and divine. So we can say that Mary is the mother of Jesus, mother of Jesus and Nazareth, mother of a son, her firstborn, and the only one. We're going to say all those things. But we can also simultaneously, simultaneously say, if I can even say it myself, that she bore God incarnate, that she bore Jesus Christ, who is the second person of Trinity. That means he, and he's God. So she bore God in her womb. That means she becomes the mother in her, in her earthly nature to both, well, I should say in the person of Jesus, this is always difficult to get this, the person of Jesus who was divine from in, from eternity, begotten of the Father, and yet became human in time. So this actual declaration, while it speaks about Mary, and we might call it a Marian feast, it's actually a Christological or a, a solemnity about Jesus. It's making a statement about who Jesus is. For if we cannot say, for example, let's put it the other way, if it is not allowed to say that Mary is the mother of God, then we have to deny that Jesus is God. And no Christians do that. I mean, there are some sects that propose that, but those are not Christians. But Christians do not do this. Jesus is God. We're thinking we have to make sure we keep the, the high Christology and the low Christology together. When we separate those and say, no, he's not God, or he's something lower than God, then we get into another heresy called Arianism and others. This is important. So we celebrate then Mary, who is a model for us. Yes, but what is she modeling? Who is she to try to model after herself? She's trying to follow God, her Lord, her Savior, Jesus, the Father, the Holy Spirit. And so she is truly Mary, mother of God, in that she bore Jesus, the one person with two natures, right? Two natures, who is human and divine. And that's called a, in fact, that coming together that of uh, humanity and divinity in theological statements, we call it the hypostatic, how do we, hypostatic union. Somehow they are together in an intimate way, undivided. So that's what the celebration is about. Now, I hope that you were able to come to Mass this weekend. We had a wonderful turnout last weekend. Of course, it was Christmas. It was awesome to see. We had oh, probably a thousand people at our four o'clock Mass. I didn't count, but it was absolutely packed. And then we had a common, we had well attendance and the other masses, but we had also lots of extra room. So if you're still cautious about coming to mass because of either COVID or a cold, I would encourage you to still come. Please come, come home for Christmas. It's still Christmas season. Come home for Christmas. And maybe you can sit in the, the day chapel. There's lots of room there. Our five o'clock or 5.30 mass especially has room and the eight o'clock mass has lots of room. It's our 9.30 that is a little more crowded. What a good dilemma, right? But if you're concerned, I want to encourage you, please consider that. You can wear a mask or you can sit in the other space. Uh, you can stand in the narthex, the entryway, or some people call it the lobby. And join with us as we celebrate, the Mar we celebrate Mary, Mother of God, which makes the statement about a belief about Jesus to actually celebrate this Marian feast quote unquote, we are making a dogmatic statement about Jesus, a statement that he is God and praise the Lord. Pray, and that's why we can worship him because nobody should be worshiped. Mary, we venerate. It's a special word for that, but I'll just call it venerate for the now. And I hope that you will then come and join with us. In the meantime, go ducks, right? Go ducks, right? There's He's a... Uh...
Hey, Snickers. Hey, buddy. He's, he's in a permanent halftime state. <laughs> well, I'll see you at Mass. Deacon Brett is offering the homily, and I look forward to saying hello, and uh, have a great rest of your week. Bye-bye. Hey, Snickers, look it. Snickers, come here. Hey, how are you, huh? You happy about this game? You excited about the game? Do you care? You're obviously wearing a duck shirt. I wonder how that happened. Hmm.